Aquarius, it's me, Stormy, and welcome to your February 2020 horoscope. We're going to get in here and I'm going to get you out because February is one of the quietest months that we have here in 2020. What we've got on the agenda that we want to pay a lot of attention to is going to be this Mercury retrograde. And not only is Mercury retrograding, but he's retrograding for the first part of the retrograde in the energy of Pisces, where he's in fall, so not entirely comfortable, but where it's going to push, push, push your intellectual energy is inside to have to trust your intuition, right? You are an intuitive energy, but sometimes you like to take the intuition and then throw it through the logic and the intellect, and that's not the case this month. Logic is not the stuff dreams are made of this month. It is definitely dreams, visions, intuition. As we can see, as we look over here and we check out the chart, you can see that this is a heavy eastern on the left side of your chart kind of month. You have it heavily populated. So there's a lot going on this month where you're taking action on what you would like things to be. It's a very self-confident time. It is also a time where the things that you're deciding, the moves that you're making, you're very well supported. And Mercury, as it moves into that retrograde and just into the energy of Pisces, will also be helpful to you because as you're making changes and you're trying to continue to press forward, it's nice to be supported. It's nice to know that there is compassion, empathy, and genuine people supporting you as well. So I think you get to see that and experience that this month, okay? All right, right at the beginning of the month on the third, we see our communication planet Mercury. Communications, ideas, patterns, decision making, thinking, the way that we study, all of these things come from our mercurial energy. And Mercury is going to take that move and move into Pisces. This is where Mercury is in what we call fall because he wants all the logic. He wants the details. He wants them quite quickly. And he cannot get that in the energy of Pisces because Pisces is a little bit more vague about energy. It's much more feeling than fact, right? Pisces energy is a better listener than Mercury is typically as well. So Mercury is thrown into not being able to do it his way. So instead of having logic be the most important thing that he's giving you this month, Mercury is going to become a very good listener here. Now, this is in your second house. It's going to light up your second house. So what happens this month with all of this energy moving through your second house and then all the rest of the big energies in the 12th house? We know that two big factors or two big ideas or themes that come up for you this month are money and spirituality. Right, The 12th house is about all that spirituality. The second house is about money. So what it also gives me the indicator of is with Mercury here right now, he's not retrograde. There's a conversation. There's what's what's been in your gut about your finances. What's your intuition telling you about your finances? What dreams, what visions, what emotional reactions are you having to your money? Because what Mercury can help you do here is make those changes, get some new ideas, get some new actions, some new beliefs around those things so that you can get some new ideas formed before he heads into this re retrograde. I also think that this is a great place um, where if you wanted to work someplace and you like had the interview, but then they didn't call you back and you didn't hear for a while, as it moves into the retrograde, you may hear back from a potential job place as well. If you felt like, oh man, I don't know, I felt like that went really well, what happened? You could hear back from them. That's that empathy tapping in. All right, on the seventh, we've got Venus. She's hitting the road from all the Piscean energy, which she just loved, by the way. Now moving into the energy, get over there, you're honest. Now moving into the energy of Aries. Venus in Aries is not completely comfortable over here either because Venus is very much so about harmony and everybody wins. Aries is more of an energy of I, not to mention Aries wants to do things quickly and Venus is just not about that life, okay? But here with Venus and Aries in your third house, one of the things I want to bring your caution to is that Venus and Aries can be very, very impulsive. Now this is in your third house, your thinking, your communications, your decision making, and your logic planet is quieted. It's stuck in the emotions. You could have an outburst here that creates a little bit of fire. But I also think what Venus and Aries is brilliant for doing is saying what they need, sharing, listening, asking for what they need. So communication here can actually bring so much depth, right? It can bring so much depth in these areas. So don't, don't let this take you down. Don't let it make you too impulsive. Instead, really get on board with how this can be positive for you for sure. The other thing I'll tell you 
is that Venus does like to bring money in. So if this is an area where you're figuring out you have a communication skill, you know how to build websites, you know how to write books, you're a ghostwriter, you're an editor, you could see this being fulfilled as well. It's fulfilling your intuition, your dreams, your vision of yourself. Something in a place where you can't really see it yet, you can just feel it. <clears throat> this may be giving you some information to help you get the work done over here as well, okay? Last thing I'll say is this. The third house is neighbors and siblings as well, right? And I'm thinking a little bit more along the lines of neighbors here, but Venus and Aries can be very impulsive and like a little one night stand, right? The closest person is probably gonna be a neighbor or somebody who you are studying, you're in school with, there's a close relationship there. And I'm not saying don't do it, that you do you. What I'm saying, Aquarius, is whatever comes of this, just make sure that your heart is protected, okay? All right, on the 9th, we're going to have a full moon happening in the energy of Leo, which is right across the street for you. So 7th house, we've got this full moon that says that something has to be ended, acknowledged, or adjusted. So we need to create a shift here, and it's in your relationships. Leo is self-expressive, right? I need, to, I need to say what I need to say. This is what I, I want. This is what I need, right? And it's also an energy of being very, very original. So I feel like with a lot of the support that you've got happening over here, energetically, not just from the plans, but maybe from people around you as well, um, this could bring significant relationships into your world. And if you will be honest about what you need, where you're at, right? Because here's the thing. I think about this example of my client. She had tried for a really long time to get a job, something steady that she could like, that she could really be into, and she just couldn't find it. She kept getting these jobs, and she would keep them for a little bit, but it was really unsatisfying. And so she went to a job interview, and they asked her why she wanted the job, and she listened to what they needed, and then she told them the truth. I've been trying, and I'm willing to work, and I am willing to be a part of a team, and I just haven't found my fit. And they gave her that job, and she's been at that job for almost four years, right? So sometimes just a good dose of being original enough to tell the truth of what's going on can bring these significant relationships in your life. I do believe as well, because Leo is self-expressive, if this is a relationship that's not going well, needs an adjustment, conversations need to be had, Venus is here. She is good for conversing. She is going to bring a little bit of harmony. So you might be able to have these conversations that need to happen to kick these relationships back on the correct course, okay? On the 16th, you're going to see Mars moving down here, pointing his little sails towards your 12th house. So the 12th house, the energy of Capricorn, is completely active here. Now, Mars likes action and movement in the body, right? This is a wonderful time to take care of yourself. Be gentle with yourself. Do that Tai Chi. Do that yoga. Um, download Calm.com app and just take care of your spiritual life. Right In your own spiritual practices, I think with Mars there, it's a good question to say, where am I at? You know, Am I actually going to church, if that's the thing that you do? Am I participating in something that keeps my spirit healthy and alive? Am I participating in charity things because that makes me happy? Or maybe it doesn't even make you happy. Maybe you just have something to do like working with others, volunteering, charity or something, and you're very busy with it at this particular time, Mars is definitely going to bring that into your wheelhouse, but it's not terrible. Mars is comfortable in the energy of Capricorn. They like to do stuff with each other because they take energy and the use of resources and put them together in this structured way where you're getting things done here. I will say this and leave it. If in your 12th house and in your quiet time this month, you're encountering something that is pain, pain in the body, it's Mars, pain in your heart, pain in your head, pain in a place that you can't see, you can just feel, this is a wonderful energy to get you connected to this moon energy and get the help that you need. Allow someone to walk you through the pain because there is pain. There is hope. There is good stuff on the other side of whatever the pain is, as long as you'll let somebody to help you get, get you out of that. So don't be afraid to ask for help if you need it this month, and I'm sure Venus will make you very comfortable to do that, okay? On the 17th, we see this Mercury, who has made this move over into this energy of Pisces, taking the retrograde, okay? Now she's going to start her retrograde over here but then end at 28 degrees of Aquarius, March 10th. So we're gonna begin this retrograde at 12 degrees of Pisces before we start to move back towards Aquarius. During the retrograde, we redo, revisit, reconnect, go back over, we go back to the past, we need to see something 
adjust it or or bring it into our consciousness, bring it into our current reality because it's got purpose to it. But we're going to go back over something we've already seen, already been a part of. Budget, value, your self-esteem, your talents and skills with how you make money, any of these things, your financial life will be under review. And if your spiritual life is changing or coming alive or you're having these little epiphanies, it may very well change your money as well, okay? On the 19th, we see the sun coming down, getting on board here. The sun is light, heat, life, and vitality. So you're motivated to do the work in the second house. And it can also, with vitality being here, bring money into your life or into your world in some way, shape, or form. And it may come because you formed a significant relationship or a significant relationship, which could be your significant other, is being very supportive about something financially with you, okay? On the 20th, we've got a neat aspect I want you to pay attention to. Jupiter, who is here in your 12th house, is going to come into a sextile with Neptune, who's down here in your second house, okay? You've also got this Mercury retrograde. You've got the sun energy. All of that's happening over there, so it's a busy second house. One of the things that it makes me think of is, first of all, when planets have sex, that's good for us, right? Because it's useful. You can take it and you can move it forward. You have an, a pocket of opportunity, but now you're going to also intelligently step into it. So with this, between your 12th house and your second house, I'm going to tell you, go to ground, right? Go to ground. Go to your heart. Go to the vision, go to the empathy, go to the intuition. What do you need to do to change or progress your money forward? Trust your intuition. It's literally like your spiritual life will show you how to change your money, how to invest your money, how to change your self-esteem, right? You're going to come into a building time in this next set of energy. So you've got to get a solid foundation together. And some of that, Aquarius, is how you feel about you. Right? Where's your level of self-esteem? Because I just can't give you access to my life if your level of confidence is not saying that you can handle this. I can't hire you if you don't have the confidence to tell me about your skills, right? If you won't show them to me. So trust your intuition, trust, trust your special talents, trust the fact that you could get a volunteer position, right? You could take on doing something that you're volunteering at or you're doing it for charity or something like that. And then it impacts your money. Maybe they hire you and don't want you to be a volunteer anymore. Maybe it brings so much value and goodness into your life that it's a game changer. Trust your intuition and it will progress you forward faster than anything I think you've ever seen. The other thing I think of in that energy is your ideals. Set your ideals. Reframe your ideals. From the spiritual being that you are, how do you want to show up as a valuable human? If you don't know what your ideals are, how can you know that you're growing towards them, stepping in them? Why do you charge what you charge for your business? What are your ideals? You know, what makes it valuable? So make sure you reset your ideals at this time as well so that you know what they are, so that you never have to worry about that you're not growing towards them, okay? As we end this month, we're going to end it. Come here, moon. We're going to end it with a new moon happening here in Pisces. When we have a new moon, the sun and the moon are dancing together. So absolutely anything is possible. And again, this all gives weight to the brilliance and beauty of what you can bring into your second house. If you trust your intuition, trust the visions, trust that place in between the worlds, you will create something in a space that's just a dream or intangible at this time. And as we move into these Aries energies, they'll start to take their form. So trust this new moon, plant your seeds of intention for what you would like to begin or to adjust or to refresh or bring life to in this particular area, okay? All right, Aquarius, like this video, comment, share, subscribe. Thank you for being graceful with me as I'm learning about my new setup. It'll be perfected, you know, we're getting there. I love you guys a ton and I look forward to seeing you next month, okay? Bye!